Good day everyone. We will test a TSQL query to get always on availability group failover time from SQL server error log. Let's get started. I'll be using this particular environment for this video. JBS AG1, JBS AG2 and JBS AG3 are part of an availability group called JBS AG. It has got three databases added to it. Uh, the databases are JBS Wiki, JBDB, and Arc Reactor. We have a listener configured for this availability group JBS AG called JBS APP. JBS AG1, JBS AG2, and JBS AG3 are uh, configured using synchronous commit. Let's get to the primary replica, which is JBS AG1. And then uh, let's look at the always on availability group uh, uh, once to uh, ensure whatever uh, we have discussed is right. So we have three replicas. Uh, they're all uh, configured using an availability mode of synchronous commit. So now what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to use the SQL server error log and then uh, going to check when was the last time the failover has happened on uh, these uh, replicas? So right now, what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to run this query on JBS AG1, which basically uh, 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 queries SP underscore read error log. Number zero basically refers to the current SQL server error log file. Um, uh, increment this value for example, from zero to whatever logs we have. By default, you will have six uh, uh, error logs, but uh, we have an option to increase it. For example, if you have uh, um, uh, the default value of six, then um, uh, zero would be the uh, uh, value for looking at the current uh, SQL error log file, and you can increment this value to check the old logs. And next comes uh, this one, uh, this number called one, which uh, basically refers to SQL server error log. There is option to uh, check others also like SQL agent log, but in this case, I'm uh, interested only on SQL server error log. And uh, the third uh, parameter is basically like, um, uh, uh, basically like um, um, uh, trying to check um, uh, this particular message on the SQL server error log, which basically tells like the state of the local availability replica. So you have uh, uh, messages even after that, uh, but uh, what I'm basically telling is like, uh, as far as the SQL server error log on the, um, uh, current log, uh, just check the SQL server error log for uh, this particular value of the state of the local availability replica. And uh, string two, basically uh, that this refers uh, to the search string two. And I have used the name of the availability group for which I'm uh, going to check the failover time. So for example, you might have several uh, availability group. And uh, if you want to look at uh, that particular, uh, any particular availability group, then you can pick that uh, availability group name and then put it on the search string to parameter. So let's execute this query now and then see what we are seeing. So right now I don't see anything because uh, the availability group name is wrong. So let me change that to the right name. So if you see here the availability group name is JBS AG. So let me execute that and then run this query. So what I'm able to see is like we have four entries here. So let me Press Control T for uh, uh, sending the output as a text mode. So if you see here, the time is 4:10 p.m. Yeah, 16:10. So if you see here, we have a failover around 16:2 p.m. So basically, if you can see here, it basically tells like uh, the state of local availability group JBS AG has changed from secondary normal to resolving pending failover and then you are seeing a message like resolving that is basically this availability groups as uh, JBS AG has changed from resolving pending failover to resolving normal and then this uh, AG group has changed from uh, resolving normal to primary pending and then primary pending to primary normal so we can clearly understand that uh, uh, this availability group around uh, 4 to p.m. Uh, was a secondary and uh, secondary normal refers to uh, second, uh, secondary replica. So it changed its role from secondary normal to resolving pending failover and then resolving pending failover to resolving normal and then resolving normal to primary pending and then primary pending to primary normal. That means like from secondary it transitioned to uh, primary. So now what I'm going to do is like I'm going to connect to one of the secondary which is JBS AG2 and then I'm going to run the same query there and let's see what happens. So if you see here, it basically tells that uh, uh, 
uh, uh, around uh, 4 2 p.m. So what happened is like we basically failed over from uh, JBS AG2 to JBS AG1. So uh, JBS AG1 when this failover happened was the primary. So it basically tells like uh, uh, the role of JBS AG uh, is changed from primary normal. That is, uh, it was primary at that time. It changed to resolving normal and then resolving normal to secondary. So what happened is like when we failed over from JBS AG2 to JBS AG1, JBS AG2, which was the previous primary, become uh, the secondary, and then uh, JBS AG1, which was the uh, secondary before, basically transition to uh, uh, primary replica. So this is the way that uh, you can use. This is one of the way to be frank, and it's an easier way instead of checking uh, your. Um, uh, event viewer logs, SQL server error log, basically like you will have so many entries in the SQL server error log, it becomes very, very tough for you to understand. And all these things are informational message to be frank. And now you need to scan through each and every line and then you basically have to understand at what time what ha basically happened. Uh, in case if you don't have this TSQL query, then what you basically have to do is like, uh, you basically have to look at the SQL server error log, then the event viewer logs and then the cluster log, and then you need to ascertain like what happened like uh, but if you use this tsql query uh, within like 10-15 uh, seconds you will be able to understand like what time the failover happened and what was uh, uh, the role for this particular replica before and uh, what was it after so you can get all these information within 10-15 seconds this is not going to tell you basically like uh, what was the reason for the failover but at least you will be able to understand like uh, whether a failover has happened and uh, what is the current primary and what was the um, um, uh, previous primary and uh, all those informations can be retrieved within 15 20 seconds that's it for this video thanks for watching have a great day jai hind